Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the HPC C50. This is a Falcon Wiser, what they call a large pin code card. Let's take it out. And here's what it is. This is a code card from HPC. Um, this is meant to cut Falcon and Wiser, as they say. That's what it looks like. If you're looking at this video, you probably are quite familiar with what a code card is, or perhaps you're not. Um, this would go with HPC's Blitz series of machines and is a not unique but ingenious way to go about originating keys. So originating keys mean you're going to take a code and you're going to create a key from that code and the HPC Blitz machine, which uses this, is one tool to go about doing that. Other companies have other origination machines. So when it comes to key machines, you've got different types. You've got manual, semi-automatic, fully automatic, um, that are duplicators. Okay, you're just going to duplicate a key. Or oh, I suppose automatic uh, would be able to originate a key as well. You know, you could have an HPC code max or, um, you know, and enter in the bidding that you want on the keypad and it will create the key for you. Um, but if you, if you have a blitz machine, um, you're going to need this card, and you are going to originate a key rather than duplicate a key. You can't duplicate a key off of code. You would originate it, and then you would duplicate it. So if you were going to make 10 keys for your customer, you wouldn't cut them all on this because you're using this needle and dial sort of principle. And to the caliper, every cut every key that you cut is going to be technically different, but you'd want to cut one key or, pardon me, originate one key on this system, make sure it exactly works the way you want, and then duplicate your keys. So what is a code card if you're not exactly familiar with it? Let's dive into that now. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. So the way that the HPC code cards work is that they have um, an area into which you slide the code card in, into the machine. You've got an X and Y axis wheel on the machine where you can move the carriage left to right and then you can set the depth. Okay, let's just call it a two axis style machine. And you dial that needle to the appropriate depth, oh, pardon me, to the appropriate space, one, to, one through six, and then to the appropriate depth is how you do that. So you'll move the carriage over till the needle lines up with the first space. You'll then run the depth and bring the key to the cutter, and you'll create the depth right to the depth that you want. You'll back that out. You'll go to space two. You'll run the depth in, and you'll cut that to the next depth, and so on, whether it be a five pin or a six pin key. Um, and that's th that's really everything here and below. That's this is the usable port portion portion of this. That's what you're going to use. Everything up here, that's all encyclopedic information, which is really great to have. And let's go over that. That's going to be uh, what we talk about right here. So I'll hold the card up, and as we describe this entire, you know, one third of the top of everything here, it's a bunch of numbers, etc. Okay. Okay, and so what we have up here, and this is really great um, encyclopedic information. Now, are you ever going to need it? Ever? Yeah, ever, sure. Will you draw on it often? Probably not. So if you study this diagram, you'll see 0.237. That's the distance from the shoulder stop of the key to the first cut leg same thing in the, in the sense of the system shoulder stop to the first cut that's 0.237 and that is right here your first cut 0.237 then you'll note that it's 0.156 that's the center to center of every other cut so 0.237 Plus 156 is 393. Plus 156 is 549 if you follow along and all the way down. That's really nice to know what your centers are of your cut. 
okay? Then the depths are here. And you'll note a 0 is 0 0.315 and a 1 is 0 0.297, but a 9 cut is 0 0.153. Well, that's a much smaller number. That's somewhat counterintuitive if you're accustomed to a 9 being a deeper cut than a 1 or a 0. And in almost all systems it is. Not all. In almost all systems it is. ASA is turned on its head. The longer, the big numbers are really short pins. And a, and a 2 in ASA is a really big pin. And a 9 is a short pin. So, but why would a 9 cut be a smaller number than a 0 or a 1 in terms of that decimal? Well, the way that depths are actually measured, and you may already know this, and maybe you don't, it's measured from the root. I should have a falcon key. I apologize. It would take all but 12 steps. I'm just too lazy. The root of the key to the depth of the cut. If I put my caliper in there, I'm going to get that decimal point. So theoretically, if I know the center to the first cut and then the successive centers, and I know the depth from the root to the bottom, I could take that. Well, my my vice I just put away. I could, in theory, take a, a peer, a peer uh, file, a file that's shaped like a peer. That's the one that we like to use. I could, in theory, create that key. Okay. I probably wouldn't do a real good job at it, but I could. You know, I'm, you know, that that's why that information is there. It gives you that. If you had to originate a key, and that's another way to do it, by hand with a file, okay. Um, and then, of course, impressing a key is another way to do it. Well, that's probably how you would do it. You'd file that key into a knife edge. You'd get that key in there, and you'd you'd turn it until it left some distinguishing marks that will tell you, ah, file more, ah, stop filing, that sort of thing. I am no expert when it comes to impressioning. I know in my head how to do it. My hands don't speak that language very very well. I've done it in the past. You don't want to wait on me to do it. So now we've talked about everything that's up here. Depth increment. This is a 0.018. And the space increment we talked about. But 0.018, that tells us something. And it's going to be right over here somewhere. Should be. I am looking for the word step. I don't see it. Um, because it's 0.018, we know that it is a two-step system. And you'll note that you have depths 0 through 9, just like you would in Schlage. Um, and that's because 0.018 is too thin to have a difference between a 3 and a 4. There's no number one master pin in the Falcon kit or the Wiser kit. So that means when you're master keying, you'll have to be two steps away. That 0.018 is below what happens to be the threshold of 0.023. Anything smaller than that is a two-step system. Anything above that can be a, uh, a single-step system, like Corbin System 70. Um, would be a, would be a one-step system, a single-step system. Um, so there you go. That covers down here. Up here, we've already talked about. Now... Over here, it tells us you need a, a CW14MC on the machine to cut these, that it's a direct digit code, red bow to tip. So now you know what cutter to make sure that is in the machine. HPC has lots of cutters. The wrong cutter will give you a key that may not work um, and, and, and ought not work, um, although maybe it could. Anyway, so that's the cutter you need. But also over here, it tells you you need the, sorry, just getting it to focus. You need the A jaw. That's the jaw that has to be in your blitz machine. Over here, there's a reference to key blanks. You know, if you pull up the Kaba Ilko book, you're going to see 1054 WC. You're going to see references to those key blanks. Now over here, you've got a DSD 065. That is a reference to the depth and spacing data manual, which I'll show you in a moment. And then you've got a max of five. That means your maximum adjacent cut specification is 5, which means you can have a 2 cut next to a 7 cut, but you can't have a 2 cut next to an 8 cut, because that 6, 2 to 8, is bigger than 5. You can have 5, but if you have more than that, what happens is your cut gets so deep and it gets so wide at the top of the key that it obliterates part of the cut next to it. That's why that is. So it tells you a max of 5. Then below it are any special notes that you should know. Note when using the original pins, widen as shown if using the 14MC. 
or use the 1014 cutter on center marks. So there is a note there that says, hey, here's some additional information that you probably might want to know. And you can see down here how they give you the widen marks here. Then finally, Wiser Falcon, and that's a C50 card is what that is. That's the part number of this. This client ordered a C50, a C45, and a C31 is what they ordered. So what I'd like to do now is switch to the screen view where I can show you some additional information. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did, and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now let's get back to it. Okay, let's talk about the card itself. Not much to see in our website, but let's take a look at some photographs that are here. There's the code card itself. You can really study what's happening here now. Without me holding it very shakily in front of a camera. Just great information that's here. Uh, the top of the card, the midsection of the card, and then the business end. And literally, you'll center on the, on the space, and then you're going to move your carriage a little to the left, and then a little to the right, and you'll widen those cuts. That's how that works. And it's because that CW14MC, the profile shape of that cutter is such that it requires it. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Okay. I guess what that means is they don't have a specific cutter just for this. Um, well, the CW1014, they're saying use on center marks. So we'll see if we can find that as well. Now let's get to some encyclopedic information. There's a link below this video as seen here to the manufacturer's page. Um, and from here, we can pull up not only all of the HPC products we sell by means of this horizontal navigation. There's a link to the manufacturer's website, but there is a link to the depth and spacing data. And if you recall, it was an 065 that was on the card. 065. So let's click on depth and spacing data by number. You could also do it by manufacturer. Let's do it by number since we have the number. Control F, 065. And we have a couple of matches. Neither of them are good. Let's just try 65. Going to be a lot of that. Let's try Falcon. Small format. Here it is. So our first match was a small format. And here's our Wiser Falcon DSD 65. It's a C50 card. That's the cutter you use in a blitz machine. Here's all the depth and spacing data should you want it. Jaw A. If you have a punch card, it would tell you what card to use. There Apparently there is no punch card for this. Okay. Nice to have. Um, also, if you recall... 1054WC, 1054WB. I had mentioned Kaba Ilko. Let me show you where their key blank catalog is on our site. Just type in Kaba Ilko, get on any item, then click more from Kaba Ilko, and the key blank catalog will show up. And let's wait for that to load, and then we'll do a control function for 1054WC. There we go. That's a good old fashioned looking Falcon blank right there. 1054WC. If it's a six pin, it'll be an A. Seven pin, I really, I've not seen a seven pin like this. I, you know, the easy number is FA1. I'm assuming this is a G keyway. That's the standard Falcon keyway. There was also a 1054WB as well on that code card. <clears throat> um, it might be the same profile, just with a different bow. Apparently, Adams Wright must have used a Falcon Wiser section. But what's nice about this is if as you continue to go through the catalog, you're going to find all of the instances of 1054WB. And then it will show up in these cross-reference listings in the back of the catalog. The back of the catalog is really great. So it's a 1054WB. It's a WR2 by Cole. Jet is going to be back here. Obviously Curtis. It's a, it's a WR3 from Curtis. You get the point of that. So the last thing I'd like to point out to you would be the manufacturer's catalog on their page. HPC, product catalog. Waiting for that to load. There it is. 
Okay, so in the beginning of the catalog, obviously some history on HPC. Um, and that it starts with key machines. This catalog is admittedly a bit older. Um, I don't know when is the last when the last time is that they produced a catalog. Who knows? Maybe mine's just out of date. Um, but it does indeed work for me. Their Blitz machine is pretty close. Uh, I don't own a Code Max. I own a Tiger Shark, um, or maybe I do. I've forgotten. The uh, Blitz machine is here. The standard. This is the platform on which you're going to use code cards. Right there. I think every lock shop has one of these. And it's that's the thing about locksmithing tools. There's many ways to... There's usually more than one way to do a particular job. But there is almost never one best way to do a job. It turns out the Blitz machine is best at something. And in my opinion, it's originating keys, but from a variety of different platforms in one machine that acts as a modular sort of system. Okay. You can throw in different cutters and different jaws and different cards and get different keys, uh, get the ability to originate different keys. You're not going to duplicate on this. It takes too long and they won't be as accurate as they should be. There's a red tip stop right there if you're doing small format. Um, and as you scroll through, there's going to be more information on the Blitz machines. You're certainly going to see their punch machine, which I don't own one. I have a blue punch for punching. I've just, I've, I've always, I've always, for 30 years, I've always had a blue punch. I've just stuck with it. A duplicator. As we continue to scroll through, fancy, or I shouldn't say fancy, but specialized key machines. There's going to be a tubular, tubular, tubular cutter that we see here. A couple of them, I think. A manual duplicator for um, tubular keys. A listing of code cards. There's scores of these. The Deck 150 might be what comes with the Blitz when you buy it new. Um, you know, Kaba Peaks, Corbin Russwin, Kawasaki. You get the idea. Lots of different items here. Punch machine information. And as you continue to scroll through, Jaws for the Blitz machine, you're going to end up seeing cutters after the tip stops at some point. Accessory pieces. There's your cutters. Um... 14MC or the 14MCC is carbide. Same cutter, just one's tool steel and one's carbide. When you buy the machine, you'll get the tool steel, I'm sure. I always opt for carbide when it's available. It's substantially more expensive, but I find the life expectancy out of it is equal to the increase in cost. And it, to me, it's just worth it. I get a, I get a better cutting, a better cutting experience less chatter, especially when the tool is wearing, and I feel like I get finer uh, slivers, you know, pieces when I'm cutting the, the key as well. Um, so lots of cutters here on this page. If you were to continue to search through, you will find a lot, a substantial amount of locksmithing tools. PIX, this is HPC Master King software. I've never, I've owned this. Uh, I don't use it because I don't generate large enough systems to justify computer software as a rule. Um, and when I do generate a large system, um, yeah, I'll write it out by hand. Um, it just hasn't been an issue yet. And as we scroll through, you're going to get to a point where you will start to see those locksmithing tools, picks, rakes, um, you know, things of that nature, locksmithing automotive tools. Down here in the back is going to be uh, key cabinets and security hardware for what that's worth. Um, if you uh, have a need, they do have some unique security hardware and key management stuff in the back. I'm not sure how up to date all of these key cabinets are or wall safes are that they have. Um, I don't have a date on this catalog, but this catalog, well, they were still in Schiller Park, Illinois, so that's been a, several years. They've not been in Illinois for a long time. So this catalog could be 15 years old. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you've made it this far into this video, you must be determined to see it through to the end, and we appreciate your hanging in there with us and watching this entire video. It means a lot. It takes a lot of work to create these videos in the sense that, um, you know, it's time taken away from doing other things. However, the advantage for me personally of creating these videos 
is the fact that it does allow myself to either learn about something new, to uh, reacquaint myself with something, or to reinforce what I believe that I already know. Any comments that you might leave down below would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. In conclusion, if you have any questions on the HPC C50 code card or any other HPC product, please feel free to reach out to us. I'll end this video by saying that HPC is a really uh, responsive company. When you send them an email or give them a call about a technical support question, you always get an answer. And it most usually never even escalates past the person who actually answers the phone. They've got a very tr a highly trained staff there. And only on one instance in 30 years did I need to go become elevated past that person. I had a customer with a, it was a tubular, the client was trying to cut tubular keys. It might have been that pocket cut up and the bit that goes inside of it. And he was operating it and couldn't figure out why, how he was getting it wrong. And he was insistent that the diameter of the bit was incorrect and had to work with tech support on that. And while tech support at HPC and myself could never resolve the client's problem because they became uncommunicative. Um, the point is, is that they were there in lockstep with me every, every additional step I had to take to resolve the client's issue. I don't know what happened. I, you know, in, in, the, in the century plus of tubular based keys, um, I don't know what they were trying to cut. If you're getting bad results on a key blank, there could be, you're just cutting the wrong platform on the wrong tool kind of idea. Um, you know, there was only one type, one diameter of bit. The client gave us that on a, on a caliper. We knew that that's what it was and never got to the bottom of it. But again, HPC took ownership on the problem and resolving it. And for, for that to them, I say thank you. Any questions on this or any other HPC product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.